Hey everyone, welcome back to Console. Um, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell notification so you're uh, made aware every time a new episode is available. In this episode, we'll be looking at JavaScript execution contexts. Uh, I was kind of hoping the author would go into the JavaScript event queue. Uh, he didn't in this particular blog post, but I'm hoping he does in the future. Um, still though, uh, execution contexts are useful and they, the blog author actually led me to the previous video where we talked about uh, whether JavaScript is a compiled or an interpreted language. Um, even though we don't go into the event queue, I do think uh, the execution context and understanding them will be useful, especially to beginner JavaScript developers, because JavaScript is a bit of a funky language uh, when compared to other programming languages. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, here is Tapa's blog post. Uh, as I said before in the introduction, I think it would be useful for uh, introductory JavaScript developers. Um, here is where he's uh, actually mentioning his Cracking the Nuts series of blog posts, and this is where I found uh, the JavaScript interpreted or compiled uh, blog post, which was uh, an interesting read, and uh, like I said, it eventually led me to that J JavaScript book, which I'll link to both of those in the uh, section below the video. Um, so right here what he's saying is like it's kind of important to understand the execution context because it relates to a bunch of other JavaScript uh, related concepts such as hoisting, scope, the scope chain, closure, and the event loop. Uh, I said in the introduction I kind of hoped he would have mentioned more about the event loop. He, he briefly mentions uh, how this is related to hoisting in a follow-up blog post. Um, but nothing related to the event loop. Hopefully that uh, happens in the future. I think after I post this video and maybe at him on Twitter, I might mention, hey, uh, this is uh, an interesting topic that I think is worth uh, looking into. Uh, but for now, uh, all we're going to do is look at the execution context and the difference between global execution context and a function execution context. So here we go again with the parser and the lexer. I'm starting to sound like a broken record. Uh, I, I'm just trying to stay within theme for this section of the videos. Uh, the entirety of console is not going to be about programming languages and compilers, but I find them interesting and I like writing them and I think uh, they're interesting for new programmers as well. Uh, one thing I do like that he points out here though is like there's a difference between a, a parser environment and a lexical environment. Um, we talked briefly in a uh, previous video about like the internal representation and uh, that's kind of where the scope and the context and the environment related information is stored. So you don't, you're not necessarily aware that it's happening while you're programming unless you've written a compiler, but the compiler is maintaining a bunch of state about your program while you're writing it. Um, and, and we'll actually step through this with a very interesting tool that Papa shows in, in blog post, we'll step through what the uh, what state the JavaScript lexer, you could say, is maintaining about our program uh, throughout the execution of it. Um, so I, I thought that was an interesting distinction here. Uh, we've talked about it briefly, but I think it's worth like pointing out explicitly. So we just talked about, you know, there's a lexical environment, and now he's talking about here, there's also the concept of an execution environment, right? So there's like a maybe think of it as like pre-compile and then you know, post would be execution, actual execution. What he's saying here is like, you might have many lexical environments in a program, but only one of them is actually loaded up for execution at any particular time, right? So he's saying here, you have all these lexical environments and then you might be running this, you know, in this case, there was the second one and now you're running the, what is it, the fifth one, right? So that's kind of the, the difference you can think of logically uh, between a lexical environment and an execution environment or he calls it an execution context. So here is where he's pointing out kind of a, the first, we're gonna go over two execution contexts, one for function and one for uh, global. And before we start talking about the functional one, we're gonna talk about the global one here, right? So what he's saying is, if you have an empty JavaScript file and you load it up into a browser, it is automatically gonna have a global execution context. Even if there's no code in the JavaScript file whatsoever, you're gonna have an execution context associated with it. And that execution context is going to have a window object, which you can see here is pointing out, if you're in Node.js, you're not gonna have that. And then a global variable, this as well. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up an empty file, or he's going to do it, and then show us. We're gonna step through using this really interesting uh, 
I think of it almost like a debugger tool uh, to show like the context and the variables uh, that get loaded up while you're while you're running JavaScript in the browser. So this is the tool I was talking about before. It's called JavaScript Visualizer, and it was written by Tyler McGinnis. He's a really he's well established in the JavaScript community. I've taken a bunch of JavaScript courses from him. He really knows his stuff. And what Tapas has done is he's taken a bunch of simple scripts, like you can see the one we're about to go over below, and he's loaded them in through this JavaScript visualizer tool. And so basically you can see these contexts getting created and the variables associated with them getting created by using this visualization tool. So you can see this basic script. We have a var named Tom and a function that says say name. This is very basic, right? And you can see there's two stages here, right? There's a creation stage and an execution stage. And the particular thing to note here is in the creation stage, that variable named Tom, like that variable that we define to be Tom eventually, is actually undefined initially, right? In the first phase, you just load up the memory. You, you ba the browser basically goes, okay, I know this JavaScript needs this amount of memory for this variable. I don't know what the variable name is yet, but in the execution context stage, that's when you actually uh, assign the variable Tom to the name. In this case, we never execute the function, right? So you can see in the creation phase, we just have like memory and it's just associated with that function, but it never actually gets executed. So that memory has been allocated in the browser, but it hasn't, we're not doing anything with it, right? It's a very basic toy example, but it's very uh, illustrative, I think, of like what's going on here and why there's a differentiation between the creation phase and the execution phase. And here he's basically explaining all the things that I just talked about all over. But you can see what we're going to be talking about next is the function execution context. So we have a global one, and then right now we'll talk about the function execution context. Um, and so this is like uh, basically a subset of the global execution context, right? One of the contexts sitting inside that global execution context, we saw we've loaded up the memory for the function. Well, inside that function itself has its own uh, function execution context, right? And it can have its own variables and you know various things inside of it. Right here's an example of that, right? He's showing you a GIF from the JavaScript visualization tool where, whereby basically you're, it's, it's showing you that loaded up function that we just can see here, we've got the variable named Tom defined, right? But then you can see in here, there's a subset of that, which is our, you know, our function, our function execution context, which will show up in a couple of seconds, I'm hoping. <laughs> There we go. So you can see the actual associated with this particular function, right? The actual execution context is a subset of the global execution context with its own variables, state, and all that other stuff. Uh, in particular, one thing I wasn't aware of that you could get the arguments of the function uh, as context variables, which seems bad. Like one thing I was messing around with is you can actually define a function that takes no arguments but then still read the arguments out of the ar arguments variable. It's just like a bunch of weird stuff in JavaScript that you're like, oh man, what were you thinking? Here's a little table that kind of spells out explicitly the differences between the global execution context and the function execution context. Uh, I'm not going to go over them because I already kind of discussed them earlier in the video, uh, but it's a, it's there, it's useful uh, to look at, you know, you can pause the video, read, read whatever you need to read about it. So right here is where I'm kind of playing around with that JavaScript visualization tool, uh, kind of stepping through it. Uh, I'm not going to show too much content on this right now, but you know it does work. Uh, it basically shows you what he was showing throughout with those GIFs. Uh, one thing is, is it, it uses ES5 rather than ES6, which you'll see here it's complaining that I'm using const and anonymous functions and all that other stuff. Uh, but Still, yeah, it's super interesting, super useful tool. I would definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, it was written by, you know, like I've said, Tyler McGinnis is like a well-known JavaScript developer. He's really good, really knows his stuff. Right here is where I'm kind of playing around with that argument idea where I was saying before, you can still get the arguments. Like if you looked at my method before, right? Like that function has no arguments defined, but I'm passing arguments to the function. The function's accepting those arguments and I'm able to print them out, which, seems really bad to me. So this one's actually a new blog post, but it was short enough that I was like, well, I'll just leave it in. Um, he did it as a follow-up to the previous one. So now that we kind of understand execution context, uh, you can kind of start to understand hoisting a little better. Um, hoisting is kind of a confusing concept because it's, especially if you're coming from a more standard programming language, uh, it can lead to like some pretty weird 
results, I guess you could say. Um, and so I think I think what he's planning on doing with this series is now that he's discussed execution context, he can discuss about all these oddities of the JavaScript programming language. The general idea is though, since there's this creation phase and this execution phase, right, in the global execution context, and really also in the function execution con context, where the variables are like, the memory is allocated for the variables, and then they're assigned at the execution phase, right? You have many oddities that happen in, in the JavaScript programming language. And he's basically gone through in this blog post and outlined a bunch of the oddities that you may or may not experience. Uh, like, why is a function undefined in if I, if I print it in this spot, but not if I print it at this spot? But also, why is the function available here if I call it before its definition and vice versa, right? Things like that. He's basically going over those in, in the blog post. I definitely re recommend checking this out if you're uh, new to JavaScript at all. Particularly because he has this section right here with the hoisting rules, which uh, may seem a bit arbitrary, particularly if you don't understand the execution context stuff, which we discussed earlier in the video. But he goes through and outlines it, all the rules associated with hoisting and why they are the way they are uh, using the execution context stuff that we had discussed uh, earlier in the video. That's everything for this week's episode. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell notification so you're notified every time a new episode is available. Uh, this episode was very useful, very interesting, especially, like I said, for beginners. Um, I kind of wish he'd gone into the event queue and the event loop and all that stuff, but I think his intent is to eventually cover that, right? Uh, I think you have to understand the execution contexts before you can move into the more advanced. I think he'd get angry at me for calling things advanced because he mentions in the blog they're not really that advanced. People just treat them like they're advanced. Um, but I, I, I'm going to keep my eye on this because that, that's what I'm most interested in, in uh, reading more about is the uh, event queue more than anything else. Uh, that's everything for this week. I will see you next week.